welcome back and we're moving into our first conversation for this morning as we discuss the phasing out of plastics and styrofoam with the upcoming deadline of April 2019. Joining us on set to tell us all about the phase out process, we have Maxine Monsanto, who is the environmental officer at the Department of Environment. Good morning and welcome. Good morning and thank morning. you for having me. Yes. So Maxine, of course, uh, it seems that while we celebrated earlier this year uh, that there would be a phase out of plastics, uh, we haven't had the opportunity to be able to discuss how the process is unfolding and that's really what we want to get into today. So let's step back to March when the decision was made. Um, March when the decision was made, Cabinet had basically given us one year to implement this action. The first step that was undertaken was the development of an implementation plan in which we actually set out what the actions would be for the phase out. Mm -hmm. um, that was approved in July of this year actually and we immediately started after that with the implementation process. The phase out is going to take a legislative approach. Mm -hmm. It's actually divided into five phases. The first one is the development of legislation to prohibit the five target the targeted single-use plastics, okay. as well as issue permits and licenses for the importation of all the others so we can collect data on it. Okay. So, so let's break down first of all what is being considered single-use plastic. Okay. Um, the way the department or the ministry is defining single-use plastic are the items that you use one time only mm -hmm. and you throw it away. I like to tell people it's like 10 minutes, 10 seconds. Sometimes it's um, the items that have specifically been targeted is the shopping bags, the carrier bags. When you go to the store and you buy just one item, they put it in a plastic bag for you. That is targeted for phase out. The other ones are the single use plastic plates, cups, knives, forks, straws, as well as the single use styrofoam plates, cups, knives, that sort of thing. Okay. What has been the importance of doing away with these types of items? Um, it's twofold. One, it's highly polluting. Um, we basically know that they do not degrade in the environment. They don't even degrade at the landfill. So even though some people properly dispose of them and they end up at the landfill, because of the nature of the landfill, they just sit there taking up space. So it's costly to dispose of. So it not being degraded is one. Two, it ends up in our environment for some of it that is not properly disposed of and they break down into what is referred to as microplastics and then they enter our food chain and they impact human health. So those two primary reasons are why they were targeted or why we want to phase out single-use plastics. So what replaces them? I ask, I ask mm -hmm. specifically because a trip to the local fast food restaurant means you, you're getting twofold. You get the plastic bag and the styrofoam plate and the fork, and well, the three, fork, threefold. Yeah. <laughs> so what would, we, what would these items be replaced with? These items actually already have replaced items on the market. That was why these were specifically identified. When we were looking at it, it was over an, over developing an overall policy for s the slow reduction of single-use plastic for Belize. And what was noted was the plastic bag. There's a replacement product already on the market that's biodegradable. The plastic plates, the plastic cups, the styrofoam. There are biodegradable products already in the market in Belize that you can switch to. The issue we face is that Belizeans aren't really switching. So the idea of the legislation is that this will set out the framework to encourage you to transition to the greener product. No very clearly uh, the difference between the cost of a styrofoam plate, plastic plate, or a biodegradable plate is significantly different. Actually, that's a misconception. We've done the numbers and believe it or not, if you go from what the importers charge when they purchase these items, it's almost one-to-one. -one. It's not there yet, but it's almost one-to-one. -one. And as the demand for the biodegradable product increases, the numbers will reduce. Is there a difference in the tax structure between what uh, it costs to bring in styrofoam or plastic versus a biodegradable product? Not really. They're both under the same tariff code mm -hmm. at this present moment in time. One of the issues that we are working at is trying to look at that to try and disincentivize the other one. Mm -hmm. 
However, decentivize the, the styrofoam, styrofoam and the plastic. Okay. However, because of the issue with the tax code and how it breaks down, and the fact that we belong to a regional body, so our decisions aren't only ours. Mm -hmm. It has to be unilateral among yeah. the region. The decision was made, okay, it might be better for us to target those specific items that already have readily available alternatives mm -hmm. and to phase those out. So what you're saying is that uh, there will be efforts made to ensure that the cost of a biodegradable product will be the same or less of what a styrofoam or plastic is at this point? Presently at this moment, the tax code, they've charged the same thing, mm -hmm. in all honesty. They're roughly similar. And it's only... So why does it cost differently in the, in the supermarket? It's a cachet. You're buying a green product. You're buying a biodegradable product as a retail. It, okay, it follows the same principle as ecotourism. Mm -hmm. We market Belize as ecotourism because we are green. In the same concept, these products are marketed because they are green. Um, that's what I'm saying. If you take a look at what the distributors actually say their cost of this product is, versus what the retailers do. They're doing their markup. You can't blame them. It's their right. It's a profit. Um, from our perspective, what we're now doing is, OK, since because it hasn't been leveling the playing field, we're going to phase out one and promote you switching to a greener, more biodegradable product. Now, what have been, what's been the reaction so far from those who have been benefiting from the importation of styrofoam and plastic? Um, at this present moment in time, actually, we've had people who are willing to switch over, to yeah. convert. They've been looking into it themselves, trying to decide how best they can deal with the conversion. It's a slow process. We're not denying that. This is a first step in a long-term activity. It's a behavioral change mm -hmm. because we're so used to seeing the styrofoam, so used to getting the free plastic bag, which, by the way, isn't free for the companies that is giving it to you because they pay for it that we don't stop to think, but we do need to start realizing that the disposal of these products cost, mm -hmm. that they don't break down in the environment. So in essence, they're impacting our health and these things need to slowly change. Mm -hmm. So we're just taking the first step in making that change. There's a, there's a considerable shift. I can recall at some point years ago, you go to the market, you go to the shop, you had a straw bag. Yeah, right? your market bag. Yeah, your market bag, as Marlene calls it. And all your items that you would pick up from the shelf go in that bag. When you get home, you put up your stuff, the bag gets put away. Now, if you go to the store and you buy a single toothpaste, it comes with a plastic bag. You buy an ID, I'm saying small items, big items, they all yeah. come in plastic bags. And for me, at least in my household, I've done away with buying garbage bags because there's enough plastic, those yeah, small little plastic reuse, bags yeah. to reuse. Um, is it then that perhaps we should shift our behavior and our mindset to go back to perhaps a straw bag or something that says, you know what, if I go to purchase an item, I don't need the, the, the extra bag that the grocer would provide us with? I actually had a discussion with one of our officers about this and what we call it is you're relearning an old habit. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you remember your grandparents. Exactly. This is what they did. They reused the jars that they got from the store. They, re mm -hmm. they carried their market bag mm -hmm. or their straw mm -hmm. basket or whatever it was. And we used to practice that over the last 20 to 25 years. Mm -hmm. We somehow slowly started shifting till it's full on. We've moved to an area of convenience. Yeah. And we need to necessarily go back. So, like, it's incumbent on each individual to go back. However, that process is taking too long. Mm -hmm. So, we're trying to, like, just nudge it a bit so mm -hmm. you go a little bit faster. So, you spoke of the five-phase uh, five rollout. So, mm -hmm. where are we now? What have we completed and what is next? Actually, we've just in the process of the legislation. It, the rollout consists of development of legislation, development of standards to promote green products. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to create national standards so that you can say what is biodegradable and what we do not okay. consider biodegradable. The promotion of green products, which Ministry of Trade is handling which is primarily promoting investors in developing biodegradable or importing biodegradable products, because that is an alternative that Belize could do. And the last one is the public awareness, and then there's a monitoring aspect, tracking, to show that we've been successful in this activity. We are in phases one and phase two right now, and phase three. 
and all three, phase one and phase two, the legislation and the, the come on stream by April of next year, the standards by June of next year, and the green products. Um, trade is working continuously with their partners in this, but they expect to have everything in place by December. And then the public awareness is why I'm here with you today. We're yes. Yeah. And the monitoring will commence after we start the rollout. Mm -hmm. Which area? Because I'm thinking Belizeans on a whole, we are no longer consuming freshly cooked meals at home. We go out and we purchase everything. Do you believe then that, and I, and I say this uh, without, without uh, being racial or anything, it's just perhaps the reality as we speak. The Chinese community, which has been so instrumental in, in, in providing the kind of commerce in this country, either from the grocery store standpoint or from the fast food standpoint, do you believe that perhaps they will be the ones most affected by this? Is this something that will affect them adversely? Or is it something that once, once, they have, once you have the buy-in, that this would be sort of a, a more seamless trans, uh, transition, considering the challenges that you have, uh, you have already established? The reality is the phase-out is going to affect everyone across mm -hmm. the board because we are not targeting the vendors. Mm -hmm. The aim is at the importers, manufacturers, and producers. The general concept is if you cannot import the product into country legally, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then technically you should not be using it illegally. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is a concept that we're working off of. And we are sensitizing the different communities and a lot of them are starting to look into their own form of importation. They're trying to find ways mm -hmm. to transition. They're identifying biodegradable sources already on their own to move to the next product. Mm -hmm. What, what are the numbers that we know? How many, uh, how much styrofoam and plastic is currently being uh, imported into country? Okay, um, the Department of Environment commissioned an uh, internal study in 2017. For the year 2014 to 2016, the consultant found, and these he said very clearly were conservative numbers because there were issues with the data, that Belize imports roughly 200 million pieces of plastic bag. Um, something like 50 million pieces of styrofoam and he broke it down even further to the different types mm -hmm. as well as we produce we manufacture styrofoam we mm -hmm. manufacture roughly 16 million I think it was something like 15.9 million pieces mm -hmm. of styrofoam and th I think it was 50 million pieces of plastic bags and when you think about it logically it actually makes sense because mm -hmm. if you go and you buy takeaway three times a week, mm -hmm. and you multiply that by 52 weeks in the mm -hmm. year, yeah. you realize how much you're throwing away. If you go yeah. to the supermarket three times a week, and you walk out with three plastic bags mm -hmm. each time, and you multiply that by those number of times, it actually starts adding up. And all of that requires disposal. Mm -hmm. And all of that does not break down in the environment when you dispose mm -hmm. of it. So it all contributes. That's a lot. That's a yes. lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are we looking at uh, being able, I, I think the trade and investment portion is also a, a critical area because this is a business opportunity for people it's as most well. Most definitely. Yeah. Um, what are the opportunities? Where are we looking to import from? Are there people interested in producing locally? We have the two aspects. Um, Ministry of Trade would be better able to answer that question, but what it is is we have importers. We actually, because we already have it readily available on the market, yeah. there were people already importing and selling with biodegradable styrofoam, or biodegradable containers, sorry, mm -hmm. and biodegradable plastic bags. Um, we now have more people investing in importing. We have companies that are coming on stream who have, the moment the information was released by cabinet, they started contacting to see how they could import. Yeah. We also have the trade pushing people on the other end because one of the byproducts from the agricultural sector is actually used to make biodegradable containers. So they are promoting the idea of investing mm -hmm. and producing nationally and exporting to other areas. And I, I'm, I'm still trying to understand, because I know that's probably a question that, that people are still grappling with. How do you ensure, you said before, that the cost uh, at importing, which means landing into the country, is the same? Uh, styrofoam, plastic, biodegradable product. But when we go to our supermarkets, 
the cost is significantly different. How do we ensure uh, that this is not a practice that continues even after the phase out? Well, what we're trying to promote from our end is to actually know how much these things cost. It's like any consumer who goes out there, you know who sells the cheapest product. You go and you check the different, and you would actually see the different stores sell them at different prices. And depending on where you're buying from, one price may actually be lower. Additionally, you can actually buy it directly from the distributors. They have up their prices up for sale for all their products. And what I tell people during our sensitizations is because they're saying, oh, but can you replace this? I'm saying, look at their product list. Mm -hmm. It is actually extremely extensive, yeah. right down to garbage bags yeah. mm -hmm. and shopping bags. And cleaners. So, yes, <laughs> well, mm -hmm. but, cleaner, but if you look at their product list, it's mm -hmm. very extensive. So you have an option, you buy from your retailer or as a consumer, demand from your retailer that they give you a better price. Mm -hmm. mm. Interesting. I, my, my, my primary thing is, how do we get into the minds of consumers to create this behavior shift? Um, this is where the sensitization campaign comes in. The Department of Environment is working with multiple organizations. We have a communication and public awareness working group. Um, sitting in that committee is Oceana, Belize Audubon Society, Southern Environmental Association, the Scouts of Belize, the Village Council, to name a few, including other government agencies. And the idea is that we are each reaching out to our own sectors, our own industries, and providing them with sensitization, telling them about the phase out, mm -hmm. telling them what they can do to help, mm -hmm. and how they can make small changes in their you can make either a small change or a big change because I know some organizations that have chosen to go styrofoam free mm -hmm. in their meetings, in everything that they do in their facilities. And so you make those changes slowly and that slowly builds awareness. Additionally, the sensitization campaign is aimed at the general public to say, number one, it's good for you to actually mm -hmm. do this. It's better for your health. It's better for the environment. And in the long run, it works better from an economic standpoint because, as you said, it's promoting eco-friendly along with ecotourism. So mm. you add an added cachet yeah. to what it is you're doing. So uh, another part of the behavior that obviously um, that has to be broken is the disposal, uh, the way we get rid of our plastics or styrofoams. Um, you know, there isn't necessarily a link that once people are using biodegradable products that they will stop littering as well. How do you merge, take the opportunity to merge these two issues? So even when we are using biodegradable plates, cups, plastics, whatever, that we're still being conscious of where we dispose them. It's honestly, that is a part of the culture. That's a part of the behavioral change that is required. It's continuously pointing out to people that they should not litter, yeah. that they need to properly dispose of their products. I mean, just because it's biodegradable does not mean that you can throw it out into the open and it's mm -hmm. going to degrade. Mm -hmm. It's actually what we're looking to aim for is biodegradable that is compostable, meaning it must reach the national landfill or it must reach an approved disposal site so it can be buried in the earth and the different reactions take place for it to degrade faster. Mm -hmm. And in essence, what biodegradable means from a commercial perspective is that it needs to degrade within a year. It needs to degrade at a relative rate of cellulose, which is a natural organic material degrading. So it has to be completely degraded into carbon dioxide, all the chemical breakdown within one year. I know I'm getting too yeah. chemical, know, but that is that is honestly yeah. what it means. And yeah. people seem to think, oh, it means I can throw it out in the environment and it will fall apart. Right. No, <laughs> that is not what it means at all. Gotcha. It means it has to reach a garbage location, an approved location where it can be properly disposed of. And at that point, it starts degrading faster. So otherwise, even if you litter with biodegradable products, mm -hmm. you are still contributing yes. towards or environmental You will issues. still see it in the street and so forth because it, it so doesn't mean that it just goes into the environment and it disappears. I find that um, sensitizing people about the issue of littering and what have you, teaching them not to litter, teaching them to dispose of garbage properly has always been a challenging one, perhaps for the Dep Department of Environment as well. It is Simply because it's, it's sort of ingrained that as you're done with the ideal bag or you're done with whatever, you know, you just toss it to the side and not necessarily think about what the environmental impact of littering does. 
Well, I think that's twofold. One, mm -hmm. it might be ingrained, but it's again a relearned habit. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at pictures of Belize from the 70s, 60s, and 50s, yeah. the streets are clean. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of civic pride. We were taught to hold our garbage. And mm -hmm. depending on who you are, you teach that to your children and in school. Mm -hmm. What we are trying to do is remind people to take pride in their environment. And you can still see it today. You pass through some villages, it is spotless. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the community itself going out, picking up, and properly disposing of their garbage. So a major component of the sensitization campaign is teaching them the biodegradable products, what it is, and how it degrades, and how best you can dispose of it to ensure that you actually do not litter, but rather put it in a garbage container yeah. that ends up at a landfill. From the environmental standpoint, what's your, what, what are your thoughts on... Uh, perhaps the lack of enforcement that we see with littering because so often we use mm -hmm. the, the classic example of people going across into Mexico and holding on to their trash versus being in a Belize city where they let it loose wherever. And uh, the main difference is a fear of uh, facing repercussions across the border versus what would happen in Belize. There is enforcement in Belize, it's just not on the scale that mm -hmm. happens in Chetumal. I mean, there it's the police officers, it's almost every single servant mm -hmm. who enforces along with the citizens. Here, it's a, a few who have that power to mandate. But the other issue is it's not just there is in the enforcement, it's just that people culturally know they yeah. should do it. Yeah. Yeah. And they're fully aware of it. But here, it's an idea, as you said, it's mm -hmm. ingrained, the idea that they can just throw it anywhere. Mm. And that just takes time to change, in all honesty. It, doesn't it frustrate you, though, that perhaps if, if we could be stricter in ensuring that people would adhere to the laws that exist with littering, then perhaps we can start to, to create the behavior, uh, return to the behavior of being more conscious of our environment? It would be nice, but I mean, unless we suddenly get more funding, enforcement is going to take time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I tell people in my sensitization meetings, this may be a bit naive, mm -hmm. is a statement that why don't you enforce mm -hmm. yourself? Mm -hmm. Because I know when I travel, and not because I work at the Department of Environment, I, when I use something, I'm conscious of where I'm going to dispose of it of, or it goes in my bag, yeah. which is why I travel with reusable containers and reusable items. Mm -hmm. But most people, they simply forget and they just buy and throw away. Mm -hmm. And what you need to do is start slowly changing that mindset. Mm -hmm. And when you see someone else throwing away garbage in front of you, stop them mm -hmm. and tell them to pick it up. Mm -hmm. That helps as a form of enforcement. It would be good if we had everyone who was enforcing this activity at this present moment in time. But again, that takes time. Yeah. So looking forward, we're, we're heading into Christmas season. Uh, there's a lot of shopping taking place, a lot of plastic bags that will be coming out. Uh, have you found that some people have bought into the idea already and making those shifts um, without reaching the end phase of the, the phase out? We have people who are already doing that. We have businesses, we have individuals who are doing it themselves. We have some businesses who have started a no straw policy, mm -hmm. who basically won't give you a plastic bag unless you ask for it. If mm -hmm. you look at some places, there are signs up that tell you that. There are other places that have switched completely. Yeah. They only serve you in a biodegradable product. Most people take it for granted, honestly. They don't really notice. Mm -hmm. yeah. You notice the difference in the product, but you don't stop to realize that that retailer has chosen yeah. to go basically green, and that is happening more and more. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, in, in the United States, when, they start, when people started uh, following the trend of banning straws, there were, there were some kickbacks um, looking at uh, perhaps uh, disenfranchised making it difficult for certain people to be able to uh, consume things if they had a disability mm -hmm. if it was a child how do you how do you overcome some of the little nuances that comes with a major shift like this um some of them actually like we said before this is a first step in a long-term phase and a lot of these products have alternatives in the instance where there are those who need to use it because of a disability yeah. or so forth there are alternatives available for them to use 
you can buy your own personalized straw. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I know it sounds weird, but you literally go to this button. There are straws. people who travel with straws. There yes. are people who yeah. travel with it. In yeah. the same way they travel with their own cup, there mm -hmm. are people who travel with their own containers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have your items right there. Yeah. Um, so, and then there are, of course, there will always be the opportunity for those who can't do that. There will be small, small sets in place so that there is ways to help those who have accessibility issues. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, overall, it's generally an easier transition. Additionally, straws, there are paper straws. I've seen them, they yeah. actually work. There are paper straws that work, there are biodegradable straws that work, so it's up to you as to which method you want to use. April 2019 is fast approaching. That's less than six months away. Yes. Do you believe that, realistically, from a practical point of view, that the direction in which we're headed, this is sufficient time for us to either change the mindset, for us to implement whatever else needs to be rolled out during that period of time. Um, remember, the statement was that this is the beginning of a phase out. Mm -hmm. So it's actually going to be a phased approach. Mm -hmm. What needs to be in place by April 19 is an enabling framework okay. for that to occur, which is the legislation, mm -hmm. which is the ability to actually enforce a law to say you can no longer bring in a certain product or okay, you have a certain amount of time frame to produce that product and then you must stop. Mm -hmm. It's the laws that you're asking about for enforcement that will allow us to actually enforce the rules that says, if you have this product illegally, you can be charged. Yeah. Those are the things that need to be in place by April 19. What we're aiming for is that by the end of that year, mm -hmm. those products will no longer be available on the commercial market, yeah. meaning you can't trade it, mm -hmm. you can't sell it, you can't buy it. You that can't be found with it. Well, then you can't be found with it. That's the aim that we're going mm -hmm. for. Yeah. By the end of the year, that mm -hmm. that will be off the commercial market completely. Yeah. And by that point, it will have been replaced by the biodegradable products or the reusable products, depending on which one you, the consumer, chooses. Right. So, and, and what are you most optimistic about uh, as, as, this con as our country enters this phase of a new level of environmental awareness? We have sectors that are already pushing for this. The tourism sector is heavily pushing for this because it moves, like I said, it allows them to <laughs> add more value to their yeah. product. Yeah. Yeah. The processing sector during our discussions with them on this issue, although they're not encompassed in this phase out, have said yes, they do need to do research mm -hmm. and development into mm -hmm. identifying more greener products for processing. What I'm optimistic about is the fact that the announcement by cabinet co started a conversation with a lot of other sectors that normally would have only seen this as an environmental issue mm -hmm. and is actually now looking at it as a potential economic issue, a trade issue, something that can diversify agriculture. Mm -hmm. That is a good thing in my opinion. All right. Well, That's Matthew, sad. thank you for coming in and giving us the update. Okay. All right, thank you. We're gonna go ahead and take a break, and when we come back, it, we get another update this yes. time on the preparation of Miss Janelle Frazier, or Miss Belize, as she gets ready to head to Miss Universe. That's coming up after the break. So stay tuned.